Okay, sometimes it's worth asking a few basic, simple questions, like how is it that we are here on this round, life-friendly shell of water and land suspended between the incandescent core of this life-friendly planet and its thin atmosphere surrounding it? How could all this have happened out of explosions of stars hurling the elements that we are made of, you and I are made of? How could all of this have once appeared out of a nothingness that was inconceivably full of potentiality? And here we are. It kind of makes you tremble, doesn't it? How long has it been since you trembled? We are this magnificent universe, aware of itself, conscious. So please, if you've been sleeping, do wake up. Because the future of life on this planet is in our hands. We don't like to think about that, don't want the responsibility. But we are the universe, aware of itself and conscious. The human presence and the future is in our hands. And knowing that we might just tremble. Because on the present trajectory, this world of life is headed for heartbreak and for barrenness and for unimaginable sorrow. And yet never so far as we know, never has there been so magnificent a creature as ourselves. An endlessly creative source. We are the expressions, manifestations of the very life of all that is. But we forget that. Maybe we don't even dare to believe it. We forget our astonishing power to create a brilliant future in harmony with nature because we are nature and we grow cynical. We pretty much swallow whole the most cynical assumptions of the culture. No. Short-term profit, twisted values, greed, domination. Our vision becomes so befogged that we actually think that we can cheat on our fundamental covenant with life itself. No. Look, we've heard the math. We just heard no. Peter Nightingale point out earlier that even a two degree increase in temperatures probably leads to catastrophe. And the Carbon Tracker Institute in London has worked out that even to stay at two degrees of increase, we have to leave four fifths, four fifths of the fossil fuels that the corporations already have in their reserves, leave it in the ground. Yes. Leave it in the ground. Leave it in the ground. And we can do that. We can restructure our public life and our private lives and our way of being in this world. We can turn our great human capacities to developing the sources of energy that we're going to need, wind and solar and geothermal and tidal, and not that outdated nuclear technology that gave us Fukushima and Three Mile Island and Pilgrim and Seabrook, but new, safer, fourth-generation technologies, as Jim Hansen has urged that we do. But we haven't done it. But if we do, then we can leave those fossil fuels in the ground. And we can do it if we care. We can do it if we dare to accept the truth that the future is in our hands. If you're a young person here, contemplating what to do with your life, and you'd like to be able to go to bed at night not having to wonder whether your life counted for anything in some way, commit yourself to this great work. Our spiritual communities are joining this struggle projects like our Unitarian Universalist Green Congregation Initiative, which is built on the central spiritual principle that we are part of one interdependent web of all existence. Pretty simple, pretty basic. And we've had our energy audits, and we've got our LED bulbs, and some of us have our solar panels. But if it's just us doing those things, it's way past the time when that's going to be enough. It's time for a mass movement that yeah, the politicians right. and the legislatures and the corporations cannot yeah. ignore. And we cannot be half-hearted about this. We cannot be half-hearted about this because if we are, we will look back over our lives broken-hearted, knowing that we have betrayed our highest human possibility. It's time for a new quality of consciousness.
It's time for a spiritual revolution. It's time for moral leadership. It's time to speak and act out of devoted love for this earth and its life. Thank you very much. We're ready.